welcome to Beer and Iron's basic beer bread loaf style recipe. Here's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn to create an easy, very easy loaf of beer bread. We're going to make this bread loaf partially by using a bread maker, but we're going to proof and bake this bread in cast iron. Stick with me. This basic bread recipe will work with either a bread maker, KitchenAid stand mixer, or your own two hands lovingly kneading that dough into life. I'm going to present this recipe by using my bread machine, partially anyways, and then we'll bake it in our cast iron loaf pan. For the printed recipe, be sure to visit BeerAndIron.com or follow the link in the description below. Here we go. This recipe is a little bit different than my normal bread recipe. This recipe uses less volume of ingredients to accommodate that bread pan and to avoid a gigantic mushroom-like loaf of bread. First, let's talk flour. Not all cups of flour are created, rather measured, equally. Most of the time I just scoop and fluff and call it good. And though I've never used a scale really to measure my flour, let's just see what the scale has to say about this cup of flour. I'm going to turn it on, then I'm going to use an empty cup to zero out the scale. Then I'm going to weigh a cup of flour. 5.5 ounces. Internet resources tell me that a cup of flour should weigh about four and a fourth or four and a half ounces or about 120 to 130 grams. Our measurement ended up with a lot more. I'm going to toss that back in the bucket. Another way I measure flour is to scoop it into the cup with my wooden spoon. Just fill up that measuring cup and then use the side of that spoon to level it off. Let's see what we have now. The scale is zeroed. 4.6 ounces or right at 130 grams. A scale is not essential and try not to overthink this part. If we end up with too much flour or too little flour, we can fix that. Here we go, step number one. Measure out the dry ingredients directly into the bread maker basket or bread bucket. We're gonna start with two cups of white flour. Add a teaspoon or a teaspoon and a half of salt. Add one rounded teaspoon of dry yeast. Add one tablespoon or three teaspoons of sugar. That's yeast food right there. Set the bread basket in the machine and set the machine to your dough cycle. Get it fired up. This will get all the dry ingredients mixed up first. Step number two. After the bread machine is started, we're going to add our wet ingredients. We're going to add three-fourths cup of beer. Watch that foam. It may trick you to think those measuring cups are full, but you may end up shy on volume. I add a half a cup, and then I add the fourth of a cup for three-fourths of a cup. Now I add two tablespoons of oil. Step number three. Wait for the bread machine to finish creating that dough. This is the step where you need to let the dough mix thoroughly. We are looking for a ball of dough that knocks around inside that little basket without sticking to the sides of the basket. If it turns out too sticky, just add a bit, no more than a tablespoon, of flour, and then add more if that doesn't fix the sticky problem. If it's too crumbly and dry, then add a bit of beer. Again, no more than a tablespoon at a time until you get that ball of dough knocking around that basket. Use a rubber spatula to knock off the stuff that sticks around on the side of the basket. We really need it all to be mixed in well. My bread machine runs the dough cycle for about an hour and a half. We'll let it run for most of that time. After the bread machine is started, put it aside, pull out your cast iron loaf pan. If you don't have a cast iron loaf pan, then use a cast iron skillet or a Dutch oven. Your bread will just be a different shape. Step number four, butter the cast iron pan you want to bake that bread in. We're going to put a tablespoon pat of butter from the fridge into that pan. And we're just going to let it sit there until the dough is almost ready to pull out. The butter will soften and will be able to smear it around much better later. Use butter. Trust me on this one. We're going to add some fat here to create that beautifully flavored buttery crust. And that bread is going to pop out. Easy, easy, easy. You'll see what I'm talking about. Later, when there's about 10 minutes left on the dough cycle, 
use your bare hands to smear the butter on the entire surface of that cast iron loaf pan. Make sure it's thick, not like icing on a cupcake thick, but thick nonetheless. Make sure to get all the inside corners and bends and crooks of that pan. If the pan's gonna stick, it's gonna stick in the corners. Remember, we're gonna let that bread proof or rise inside that pan and we need that pan to be well buttered for both flavor and to create that non-stick surface. Anything left over can be saved, used on the bread later, or just tossed away. By the way, did you know that butter soaked paper towels work great as a fire starter for your campfire grills? Just saying. You don't have to wait until the dough cycle is completely ended. It's okay to pull the dough out sooner. Step number five, remove the dough from the bread bucket and form your loaf. The dough in the bread maker has a dry top and a stickier bottom. Remember that, pull the bread basket out of the machine. Though we're not gonna need this dough, we still need to flour the counter surface. We're gonna need that dusting and that flour for protection later. Stick with me, I'll tell you all about it. Now grab the top of the dough and then flip the bread basket over. Ease out that ball of dough and lay the top of the dough on the surface of the floured countertop. Basically, the dry top is now face down and the sticky bottom is face up. Get your bread loaf pan near for size comparison. Form a rectangle out of the dough about as wide as that cast iron loaf pan. We have the drier top face down on that floured countertop. It should not stick at all. Pull the edges of that dough away into a rectangle and then pull the north and south edges together like a bag or a purse. Now just flip it back the way it was like in the bread machine. The side that was laying on the flour needs to be on the top. Okay, there. Now we need to let it proof. That means to let it rise. But we need to cover up that loaf first. Get a kitchen towel and lay it across the top of that loaf pan. Now tint the towel up to allow the bread to rise and the towel to accommodate. If the towel is laying flat across the top of that dough, it may restrict the magic of that dough as it rises. Now you see there on that towel, there's a bit of flour. That's gonna keep that dough from sticking to that towel and allow for easy rising. After the dough is risen and about doubled in size, we let it go for about two and a half hours here, we're ready to bake our bread. Now don't wait for the loaf to rise to the level you expect your baked bread to rise to. It's gonna rise more in that oven. Set that oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius, give or take. Once the oven is preheated, place that loaf in the oven and let it bake for about 25 minutes. Again, give or take. We're gonna bake that bread until golden brown. If you're enjoying this video so far, consider giving us a little like by hitting that little thumb and selecting that little subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that little dinner bell. Beautiful, look at that, very nice. Bread is considered done at 190 degrees Fahrenheit or 88 degrees Celsius. Bread's not like meat. You will not likely become ill if you eat underdone bread. But who wants to eat hot dough? Not me. If you're doubtful or you created a larger loaf, you may need to check for some doneness. Just check in an area so you don't mess up how beautiful your bread looks by poking a hole in that crust. Anywhere around 190 degrees is A-OK. -okay. If it's a bit shy, don't worry, we're gonna let it rest a bit and it'll keep cooking. If it's a bit over, no worry, your crust will likely be amazing and crunchy and tasty. It's hard to mess this up. Now you're gonna be like, hey, where's the butter? Where's the knife? Me? I'm like, where's the honey, honey? but rein in that knife and hold on to that butter. We need to let this bread rest for a bit. Just for about four to six minutes ought to do it. This way the loaf will cool down a bit and pull away from the sides of that cast iron. We want it to slide out. With that being said, don't let it rest too long in that pan. It's steaming hot and we don't want the bottom and the edges to become soggy. Just grab the pan with one gloved hand and then guide the loaf out with the other hand. Look at that, popped right out, didn't it? And nope, I didn't do any coaching before I shot this scene. This scene is as is. 
and without any behind the scenes finagling. Now we'll let it set and rest for a while. We've let that bread rest for a bit. Now it's time to eat it up. This bread is soft, so don't press as you cut. You'll squish it flat. Just saw it a bit to and fro with that bread knife and let the knife do the cutting. Absolutely perfect. Look at that steam. Ain't nothing in the world much better than that right there, y'all. I tell you what. I always make a loaf of this bread when folks come over and usually double the recipe and make two loaves. The one thing I've learned over the years of cooking for folks is this. I have cooked everything from bread, salt crusted prime rib, gumbo, and hamburger squash casserole, but they always remember the bread. This recipe is easy. It's very little hands on and it has the biggest fanfare of them all. It'll create an aroma in the home that's welcoming to your family and folks that come over to eat. They always walk in and say the same thing. Wow, something in here smells good. Hey, as long as they bring beer, I'll make them this easy beer bread loaf every time. Now set out some herb dipping oils or some softened honey and let the eating commence. And that's about it, y'all. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was worthy of a thumbs up and a subscribe click as well as a little ding on that notification dinner bell. I sure do appreciate y'all watching this video. My name is Sule, and I love to share the magic that comes out of my black pots and pans. Well, that's about it. Y'all take care, keep on cooking in those cast iron beauties, and enjoying those frosted glasses full of that fermented barley pop. We'll see y'all next time on BeerAndIron.com.